Thank you for joining us. You are a part of an elite group who recognizes that black women's health should be at the forefront of the national conversation. We are mothers, daughters, activists, entrepreneurs, entertainers, corporate warriors, and more, who help boost the economy and often drive the national conversation. For 38 years, the Black Women's Health Imperative has strived to amplify our voices, help enact policy that protects us, research our issues, create programs that enhance our lives, and produce events like this one to ensure we keep the conversation going about the issues that matter to us most. So, let's get started with our program. Good evening, I'm Nikki Taylor, your moderator for tonight's pivotal discussion on health and well-being. Now more than ever, Black women are taking charge of their health and with great joy. We're living longer, stronger, more fulfilling lives. Just take a look at tonight's panel and you'll see what I mean. During this time of social distancing, we found ways to care for ourselves, to exercise, healthy eating habits, and adopting more self-care rituals that really put back what the world takes away. Week-long conferences like the Black Women's Health Imperative anniversary, it's the 30th anniversary, by the way, allow us to reflect and celebrate just how far we've come. As an author, influencer, and trusted authority to millions of Black women around the world, I have dedicated my life to our health and wellness. Now, what I know for sure is this, there's no better time than right now to define what's truly important to you because it's your time. And I'm so excited about tonight's discussion, which focuses on self-care and an essential commitment to a lifestyle of wellness. And for that reason, I want to thank our sponsors, Bumble and AARP. Tonight, I'm honored to have with us Ife Johnson, the first executive director of the Oral Health Progress and Equity Network, Inc. Known as OPEN, it is comprised of over 2,500 members across all 50 states who are dedicated to oral health, health equity, and social justice. Welcome, Ife. Thank you. We are joined by the multi-talented Selena Johnson, now you all know her as singer, songwriter, author, and daytime talk show host, but she recently added a new title, that of fitness competitor. And you better look out because she's <laughs> gonna show you how it's done. Welcome, <laughs> Selena. Thank you for having me. There is of course, Ernestine Ernie Shepherd, phenomenal personal trainer, professional model, and competitive bodybuilder who began her journey to fitness when she was just 56. Now that wipes out all of the excuses. <laughs> Today at age 84, she holds the title as the world's oldest performing bodybuilder by Guinness World Records. But she'll tell you in a heartbeat that her greatest strength is her positive attitude. Welcome Ernestine. Thank you. It's good to see you. As actress, choreographer, fitness trainer, life coach, and celebrity trainer, AJ Johnson, she is a powerful force. Her clients praise her for her no-nonsense approach to helping them reach their goals because her results are proof that the methods work. Welcome, AJ Johnson. Thank you, good to see you, Mickey and everybody. Good to see you too. Well, welcome, ladies. And I just I am so excited about this conversation. And I'm gonna, I look forward to talking with each of you. But right now, I want to kick off this conversation beginning with Ife. So, Ife, the my first question, and it's the question that everybody wants to know: what are the key components of healthy living that black women need to focus on as a priority for longevity and overall wellness? Well, actually, there's several. Uh, nutrition is paramount. What we put in our body is what comes out. So we need to think more about what we're eating, but also what's eating us. Ooh. What are we stressing over? What things are keeping us up at night? Why are we worried? And um, what are the those stressors that are impacting our health and wellness? We need to be thinking about sleep, which is one of those things that we as Black women tend to put to the side because we have so many things to finish and so many other people to think about. 
And um, the lack of sleep actually impacts uh, our, our body, our mind, our emotions, and even our weight uh, is impacted by sleep. Um, and then motion, being active, moving. Sitting is the new smoking. It's, it's one of the like major that. stresses of uh, causes of death in the United States. We're far too sedentary as, as a group. And uh, I like to say that our kids have the healthiest thumbs in America, <laughs> but this is how they get all their exercise. And we aren't much better. We tend to get on our phones, on our computers, and we sit. And our bodies were made for motion. So if we can move more and, and do that by finding something you enjoy doing, you know, I love to dance. I love to ride my bike. Therefore, I'll do it. And it's not exercise. It's not something that I have to dread every day. It's something I can look forward to. Um, and, and you'll then keep doing it. You'll invite others in. Having camaraderie is very important for us. We tend to do things far too much in isolation. We're, we're too um, siloed in our, our lifestyle. We think maybe uh, when this problem comes up, we can't tell anyone because of the shame of it or because of the guilt of it or whatever. And we think we're the only person who's ever experienced this problem. And when we do that, we fail to open ourselves up to other um, sisters who can help us. But we also fail to open up our experiences to them, which can help them. And so those are the main components, I would think. And then, it, it, Interesting you know, how camaraderie is on the list. Oh, yes, absolutely. And and one other thing, uh, depending on how you do it, meditation or prayer, I think faith is, is a major component for us to make it through. It's how we've made it through this far. We won't make it by ourselves otherwise. No, that's a great checklist. Uh, many experts, in fact, to pick up on that, say that it begins within. So how do you help those who want to change and make the mental shift to healthy living? How do you and how do you help them make that? Well, one of the things we recommend is um, getting enrolled in the Black Women Health Imperatives Change Your Lifestyle, Change Your Life program, C-O-Y square, as we like to call it. Um, it. It helps. It's a lifestyle change program. It's not a diet. Diets don't work um, because as soon as I get off the diet, I'm going to gain every pound back and then some. Oh. But if I change what I'm thinking, if I'm changing how I approach food, what I think about food, why I understand nutrition is important. If I have a reason to do this, you know, I'm old. <laughs> I'm 66 at this point. Uh, I started having my children late in life, which means they haven't gotten around to having grandkids yet. I still want to be able to get on the floor and get back up. Mm -hmm. So that for me is one of my motivators. We all have motivators that come from inside. What is it that you want to still be able to do and still enjoy life at 80 and, and you know, We've got folks on today that can show you how healthy you can be no matter what age you are. So it's about setting a mental mindset, making a decision that you want to live, that you want to live well, that you want to live healthy, a healthy lifestyle. I like the idea of that because not only do you give them the steps, but you really make them a co-partner in it because, uh, you know, change begins within. And so while you can place the incentives and the ideas, they really have to make an internal commitment. That, that's really great. I, I have another question for you. Talk to us about the CYL to Square program and how it's changing the way Black women see themselves in their health. And what do I mean more deeply by that? There are so many of us, when we reach a certain age, we think that dis-ease or disease, as they call it, or illness, or health health um, challenges go along with the every turn around the sun. And you're saying that's not so. So talk to us about, about this program and how it's changing how we see ourselves. Because I think that that's, that's a way of us settling. And, and you're saying that it should not be so. Well, if, if you decide that you're going to be old at 50, or you decide that you're not going to be old at 70, either way, you're right. It's about what you decide. Um, I have decided I'm not old yet. I get out and I hop on my bike and I do about six miles around the neighborhood because I enjoy it. Uh, I, In fact, a lot of the kids in the neighborhood ride with me. 
we do our social distancing, we put on our mask and we have a good time. Um, it's about being young at heart. It's about being um, having a mindset of deciding to be healthy. Part of what we are in is a, is a society that is designed to keep us ill. And we need to understand that, mm. that we have been a victims. Well, I don't like to call us victims because we're not victims, but we, but we have uh, had people perpetrate um, illness on us in ways that we should be able to reject. For example, in every can you pick up on in your um, in your kitchen, you'll find sugar and salt added to everything, mm -hmm. and things that don't even need sugar and salt. We are we you'll find high fructose corn syrup. It's and there was an experiment done with mice where they had cocaine and sugar, and they found that the sugar was more addictive than the cocaine. Wow! So we are being addicted to the things that make us ill: supersizing, fat, grease. All those kind of things, we don't have to live that way. We can have our taste buds happier. In fact, salt deadens your taste so that you can't taste the food. You can't taste how good it is until you get rid of some of those things that people have been pressing on us. But the Change Your Lifestyle, Change Your Life program um, is will help you over time. We don't try and do this in a quick way. We try and do this over extended periods of time with a cohort of people, with a group of women and sometimes men who are willing to work together, who support each other, and it makes it so much easier to get to your goal. Yeah, support is so, is so important. Uh, you know, I always say that your best or your greatness is not designed to operate in isolation. And so if we're going to be at our best, we really have to have uh, support in that. So if I want you to, to just wait backstage for us, because I want to pick up on some things you said when we come back together for our general discussion. Thank you for those golden nuggets. And we'll be right back. And now I'm going to ask Selena Johnson to join us. Hi. Hi there, Selena. How are you? I'm awesome. So I happy. know that's right. I'm yes. glad that you know it. And you know, knowing your value is is just so important. And I love that you have a word for it. You are awesome. Thank so, you. So you're welcome. <laughs> my my question for you. So when I look at your career and your accomplishments, awesome is the label that I'm putting on the folder. You're a singer, songwriter, two-time Grammy nominated of uh, uh, artist who pivoted and became a talk show host. But but you're also a wife and a mom, and now you're adding another title, that of fitness competitor. Tell us about your drive and how you balance it all. Well, you know, I sometimes I ask myself, girl, you know, <laughs> what is going on? You know, but um, I just feel like you can do it all in this lifetime, you know? And I feel like I don't wanna be, um, I don't wanna be, have lived my life and say, and have any regrets. I wanna be able to say, I tried. Um, if you fail, that's fine, but nothing beats a failure but a try, you know? So I wanna be able to try and do all the things that my heart desires. And I, I just don't, um, I just don't settle for can't. And you should not, you know, unless it's something that's dangerous, going to hurt yourself, obviously. But um, when it comes to being a fitness competitor, I was an athlete in high school. I've been an athlete my entire life. I played basketball. Oh. Um, I was on the tennis team. I was on the track team. So there was always that piece of, you know, competitive, you know, com that competitive energy that had not mm -hmm. been filled um, as an entertainer. Yes, you know, you're singing and you want to be the best at what you what you do, but there's still that sport competitive energy that I wasn't fulfilling. And for a very long time, I wanted to be a competitor, but I was afraid. And I thought that you're not going to be able to do that. And then I had kids and it was just like, you're not going to be able to get the way this too dis, you know, they're too disciplined and you're not going to have the time. And so um, last year I was when I turned after I turned 42, I just said, you know what? I'm not gonna stop myself from doing things that I want to do anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a bucket list and I'm gonna make check marks. And I said I'm gonna do it, you know. And I just threw myself into it. And on the talk show that I was hosting on at the time was Sister Circle, and so I, I announced it to hold myself accountable, you know. Um, and so I couldn't turn back, you know. <laughs> it's too late now, you know. All the people gonna be waiting, you know. But it was it was ultimately something that Selena once wanted to do, because as an entertainer, 
everything that I do is service and it's for the people and it's to entertain. Mm. But then I wanted to do something for just me, just me by myself. You know, right. I've always been into nutrition and health. I have a BS in nutrition science. I'm a certified hot yoga instructor. Okay. So health and fitness has been part of my life for a very long time. But this was something that I had to do for Selena. Wow. That's beautiful and so rewarding. You know, there are so many of us that have those, you know, those someday lists. And we've got this whole list of things that we're going to do someday. Right. And, and the trouble with someday, a lot of times it never comes. But I love that you made it important. And so I, my next question is, you know, many of us have begun this journey to physical fitness. How many times have we started down this yes. path? Uh, then life gets in the way. Yes. So balancing all of the things that are important to you, what tips can you share that will help women achieve long-term success when they make up their mind to do something? Well, you know, Mickey, the number one thing that I had to do because I have been up and down, yo-yo, up and down. I know all about that. I know about being overweight. I know about being very skinny and unhealthy. I know about all of that, starvation diets, I've, you name it, I've done it. Diet mm -hmm. pills, all of that. But one of the, the number one thing that I had to make a decision about was being okay to, to not be okay mm -hmm. and being okay with failing and trying again. Um, you know, a lot of times, especially especially somebody like me, we feel like when we start something, it has to be perfect. We have to be straight and narrow and we have to be disciplined all the way to the end. But that's just not the case in real life, you know. And I had to be realistic with myself that sometimes I am going to cheat. Sometimes I am going to, you know, make a mistake. I'm going to fall off the wagon. But I had to commit to myself that I was going to keep going. Because, you know, we're always feeling like, well, I got to, you know, my life was set up where I got to lose weight for a photo shoot or I got to lose weight for a performance yeah. like that. But I had to train my mind to lose weight for longevity forever mm -hmm. for life. And even to this day, I struggle with remember with remembering that mindset. Like I have to really remember this mindset and, and create a mantra to really say to myself, this is why you're doing this, not this, you know, Right. And, and being okay with making a mistake. When I tell you, that's the number one thing we fall off. And then we say, oh, I'm not going to be able to do it. See, I, I wasn't going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You can fall off and then you can start again, you know, and just right. life is a lifestyle. So it's a lifelong thing. You're it's, it's constantly working at it. And that for me, that was the number one thing, because like Ife said, it's your mind. It's your mind that has to be changed or it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to keep being, you're going to keep going in circles. Mm. Did, when COVID entered and it's certainly keeping us longer than we want to stay. Yes. Did COVID <laughs> present any difficult, um, any challenges for you to that, to that determination or to the way you've structured your days? Did COVID present a challenge to that? Yes, ma'am. Um, and interestingly enough, you would think quarantining and being in the house and being, you know, in one spot would make it easier mm -hmm. for, you know, in my mind, oh, I'll just sit in the house and eat all my meals that are prepped and I'll just work out every day. I have nothing else to do. You know, I have a gym in my house and just work out every day. But what I found was that I was combating stress at the same time. Yeah. So it made my weight loss and almost uh, like I gained five to 10 in the quarantine yeah, yeah. I was eating right and, you know, cheating here and there, but basically sticking to my regimen more than before and actually gain because of the mental and emotional stress that we've been enduring, not just with COVID-19, but with social injustices, oh you know, gosh, watching yeah. someone die on television or on social media, that's, <laughs> that's traumatic. And so I realized Stress was something that um, that that kind of set me back. The stress of it all, um, but I just kept going and kept trying. You know, just kept getting back on the wagon again, allowing myself to be okay, remembering to mourn, remembering to you know have feelings and emotions and have them, and then you know restart again. But I, for me, the stress kind of set me back and the fact that you couldn't really get to the adequate gym like you want to now, I have a gym right. in my 
but then there's certain things that you really just need. You know, I, I don't have a right. deadlift in my house, you know? <laughs> so right. um, at the end of the day, um, yeah. And I think that we downplay stress too much, so especially black women. Um, we try to muscle through things and call it strength when really it's hurting us. Yeah. Yeah. There, There's no way that, you know, COVID caused us to spend our dwell time very differently. And so a lot of us have gained weight. A lot of us have even processed stress without even recognizing it, as you yes. say. And then cortisol, you know, how you may not realize it. You may think you're processing stress when it's really processing you. So, yeah, yes. I, when, when we come back, I want to pick up on that. But before you go backstage, I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. Just given how busy you are, at what stage did you recognize that time for self was essential, not optional? Oh, when I almost had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> when it was just, you know, I, after a while, you, you start to just really, you start to feel less valued. Mm. And you think that it's the other people's job in your circle to fulfill you. Because you're pouring so much, so much into it, whether it's your job, your husband, your kids, um, you know, whatever it is that you're pouring yourself into, your church, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, I wasn't taking any time away, and I mean, uh, time aside, even from my my morning worship, you know, because that's time with God. But what about just time with Selena? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I got, I, I confused certain times like, oh, I'm spending time with my kids. That's Selena time. No, you know, and I, I was really breaking down and I wasn't, I wasn't happy. Mm. So I had yeah. to, I had to have, and, and, you know, anything can make us happy, but I mm. didn't have joy inside because I mm. wasn't really, I, I wasn't really getting to know myself, you know what right. I'm saying? So right. um, I think that, you know, it became evident that it is imperative, whether it is a 30 minute bath or with lights and candles and nobody in the, you know, in the area, or whether it's just reading a book for 15 minutes, it was imperative for peace of mind because I was starting to really not be okay. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm gonna unfortunately put a pin in that right now, but I'm gonna, when we come back, I want to ask you about that peace of mind permission slip. Ooh, that's yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. We're going to come back and talk about that peace of mind permission slip. But so wait for me backstage and I'll get you in a minute. Uh, so right now I want to bring on Ernestine Shepard. Oh my gosh. This is a sister that I have worked with and I just marvel Ernie every time I see you. And <laughs> oh my gosh, you are just phenomena in, in, in action. Uh, so my first question uh, is if you could share with us how you found your calling in health and fitness in what would mo what most would consider late in life. You know, I don't believe that, but <laughs> but in what most might consider late in life. How did you find your calling in that? Well, I'm glad you're asking me that question. <laughs> At age 56. And I had a sister. She was 57. We were invited to a church picnic and we were told we could wear bathing suits. She and I went to purchase those suits. Oh my goodness. My sister looked at me and said, take it off. <laughs> and I said, you take yours off too. She said, we have to find some place to exercise. I said, but where? I said, look at our ages. What can we do? She says, I don't know, but we're going to have to do something. We went to the picnic and we heard others sitting there talking where they were going to exercise. So within the next two weeks, my sister and I went to this uh, college. It was Coppin. And we walked in and the instructor said, what can I do for you ladies? And me being so mouthy, <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, well, I don't want to lose my hips, but I want to keep this and I want to keep that. He said, you know what? We don't do spot reducing around here. Mm. You're going to have to come in here and do what we're doing. My sister said, keep quiet and go ahead and then exercise. <laughs> so we did. 
we noticed our bodies had begun to change. We could wear things that we couldn't wear before. We were on speaking engagements. We were having a ball. But I have to tell you one thing. My sister had gotten an aneurysm, a brain aneurysm. Mm. And she said to me, I want you to continue what we started. I want you to motivate other senior ladies and let them know the importance of exercise. I said, but I can't do that without you. She said, oh, yes, you can. Well, wow. tell me what should I do? She said, first of all, you have to tell them they must start off with prayer first. Prayer mm. is very, very important. Then you have to tell them that they have to eat healthy. We're not calling it a diet because I don't like the word diet. And then we have to do some type of exercise. So she died. Mm. And for a while, I just couldn't do anything. But then I finally got myself together. And she had had a mantra. And on all of my clothes, you'll see the mantra. I don't know whether you can see this now, but it's determined dedicated, disciplined to be fit. Wow. And you, know, and you know what? Everything I wear has my mantra on. Oh, and that's, that's what keeps me motivated. And since then, I had gone on and she said that she wanted to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. So what? I worked very hard, yes. I worked very, very hard. My trainer, his name was Johnny Shamberg, the former Mr. Universe. And you know what? I entered his bodybuilding contest. I was 71 years of age. And when I entered that contest, do you know I won? Gosh. I really won that contest. Next thing we knew, we were asked to go to Rome so that I could get my certificate and my medal. Do you know I arrived in Rome March the 16th? That was my sister's birthday. Wow. And isn't that something? Yes. And then when I got off the plane, the car that was waiting for us, the tag number had 316. Mm. I said, oh my goodness, she's here with us. Wow. Then we went to the hotel. Believe you me, they were playing her favorite song. They didn't know it. When you walk through a storm, Hold your head up high. Well, it brought tears in my eyes. But mm -hmm. I knew I had fulfilled one of her dreams. Her mm -hmm. other dream was she wanted to be in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Mm -hmm. After I left Rome, my trainer, Yanni Schamberger, got a call from Ripley's Believe It or Not, I went to New York and I did some type of exercise there and they called me Granny Six Pack. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I had fulfilled the two things that she wanted and I was so proud of that. Yes. The next yes. thing was to try to get as many people as I could to start exercise. And that's what I have been doing for the past 28 years. And I have to tell you one more thing. I think somebody knows about this. I was in the Essence 
magazine. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> and I enjoyed that. I was 62 years of age. And then I think you did a story. Yes. And I have enjoyed all of the wonderful things that has happened for me and yeah. to me. Wow. And it's from the good Lord, nobody but him. Mm, mm, say so. So, <laughs> so, so just looking at you is inspiration enough for multi-generational women. But I do have to ask if there are two or three things that you could share with women who want to take control of their health but they're in their 50s and 60s and beyond, and they don't think it's doable. What can you share with them that, that they can begin to do that will motivate them? Well, when the ladies come to me and, and ask me questions like that, and they haven't begun a program, the first thing that I tell them, that they must, it's a must, to go visit your doctor, see if you're able to start exercising, and what type of exercises would be good for you. So they do that. Quite a few, after they've come from their doctor, the doctor has told them that they can start doing some type of exercises. And I have worked with seniors for so long that everyone that I have trained, not any of them have ever been injured. And then plus, once they start, I tell them, look at my mantra, and this is what you have to do daily. If you like to walk, make a commitment to go out and walk, because it's important to make that commitment and make sure that you do it at exactly the same time each day so mm. that your body will be acclimated to that particular time and you won't let anything get in the way. Mm. Then I tell them they must eat correctly. And as I said to you before, I don't call eating correctly a diet because I don't like that word. Then they have to lift weights. And what they do, not heavy weights, light weights. And believe you, me, they stick with the program that I have for them. I have ladies in my class who can do push-ups. I don't mean the baby push-ups getting <laughs> on your knees. I mean putting your hands on the floor, both feet on the floor, and going up and down. Wow. Up and down. And they do it. And also, when you come to my class, my ladies have to dress. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I tell them that. They have to put on their makeup. They have to do their hair in a way that they won't have to worry about saying, my hair gets messed up. Mm -hmm. So all of my ladies look exceptionally well. well. And I'm so proud of them. I'm sure. How many push-ups are you doing these days? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> I start off doing 10. Then I move on up. I do 15. And then I keep on going up. And it's a joy to do this. Wow. And then the others, when they see me doing it, then they too try. And I show them the correct way to do it. And they can do it. Wow. Wow. Well, we're going to come back in a second because I want to talk to you about your inner health and well-being. Because I want to know what's behind that glow. I think it's more than those push-ups. So stay tuned. <laughs> and, and I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about that. And but right now we're going to be joined by AJ Johnson. Hi there, hey. AJ. Sweetheart, I always love talking to you. Oh, likewise, likewise. So my first question is: it, it is a given. We know you are serious about health. There is no question about that. 
But when it comes to us as sisters, what does it take to make a change? And how can we get there if we don't have access to a celebrity trainer and a life coach? You know, because we're still struggling with this thing. You know, we start, we stop. But what can you tell us to just help us get on the line and stay on the line? You know, I, I have to say that even for me, a lot of this decision making and choice making has shifted with the state of the world today. Yes. Because yes. I think, and what I mean by that is, I believe that we are now in a place where as women, primarily African-American women, you have to really know yourself well, know what you want, know what your more consists of and make the decision and choice. I heard uh, Selena mention it. I heard F.A. mention it. You have to know what it is you want and make the choices and decisions to go for it. It's really interesting to me as I was watching and listening and enjoying everybody, <laughs> including you, Mickey. I mean, you know, <laughs> what, what, you. what's really contagious that I find, you know, even in my life coaching, um, right now I have a thing with the AJ Zone. I call it um, 30 minute consultations for $30 because I don't believe that reaching for your better should leave you broke. So mm -hmm. our normal consultations, which are usually $250 for 30 minutes, I price slashed them. You're talking directly to me for 30 minutes. And what's interesting, I bring it up because there's so many sisters who don't know their joy. And I heard mm -hmm. you all and you can right. you know, no matter what you're talking about, Mickey, it's clear in your smile, in your skin, <sighs> you love what you do. You know, I'm watching, I'm watching Selena, I'm watching Effie, all of us love what we do. And yeah. so as, as um, Selena said, I think there's a difference between happy and joy. And yes. I believe that we as queens have to not settle for happy. We have mm. to find joy. And to me, the difference is joy is anchoring. Happy is circumstantial. Yeah, that's right. When you got that anchor, that nobody can knock you off your joy. You're anchored in that sand. Yes. No, no matter what issues are coming, you may blow around, but it's going to be a graceful sway. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. It's not going to be that. a boat toss. It's going to be a graceful sway. So I just think <laughs> that we have to know ourselves well enough and choose our joy. Mm, I like that. And that's something we can certainly commit to without question. So one of your hashtags, and I love this, is rock your better. Now, everybody wants to rock their better. How do you keep your clients motivated to go the distance to do so? Because uh, I imagine your clients all rocking around saying, baby, I'm rocking my better. So, <laughs> so, so how do you motivate folks to, to own that? Because you're going to take ownership of that. Well, you know, I just think it's, it's, it's my language for, you know, what's the better you want to be? And that's how mm. you know, got birth. I didn't decide, hey, I want to open a fitness, healthy living business and take care of everybody's mind, body and soul for myself. Even as an actress, I, I felt like there was more to my life. I wanted to travel more than acting was allowing. I wanted to have deeper relationships with sisters. And in a business where we were all being competitive, it was hard to develop the sisterhood that I was after. You know, I graduated from Spelman. I pledged Delta Sigma Theta sorority. I'm a sisterhood girl. Yes. So, you know, Hollywood was kind of throwing me off from my root in that. And so I just decided that if I could be an example of what it looked like to reach for your better and rock whatever that is. Yes. You know, again, that's the joy in place of the happy that becomes contagion. So as I started doing a hashtag and making it one of our taglines, everybody started saying, well, I want to I wanna rock my better. I want to <laughs> yeah. rock it. And that's what people do. That's why I say it, because it kind of makes you want to rock it, right? Yeah, yes, so, yes, definitely. Better, you know, it may be a better chef, a better wife, a better sister, a better friend, mm. a better entrepreneur, a better anything. Whatever it is, you have to believe there's a better you can be on a daily basis. And whatever that better is, let's go on and rock it. Wow, that is contagious. Oh my gosh, that is contagious. You know, I've never seen a contagious challenge, but I that is a contagious challenge. I think you started. Oh my with, gosh. We, we will have to hashtag contagious challenge. Yes, that is a contagious challenge. I love it. I love, I love, it. It. I love that. So so I was gonna ask you to give us several um tips that women you know, who are at home that would encourage them to take charge of their wellness. But I know that's number one. And that's probably number two, three, four, and five too. But can you give us another one or two to add to that? 
Yeah, you know, I've got to say that, you know, people look at our bodies. I mean, look at Ernestine at whatever age, it doesn't matter. She's flawless. Selena, same thing. You know, and a lot of people look at, look at my body and think it's all about the gym. Mm-hmm. And I've got to say that it starts in the spirit. I, I've heard everyone else say the same mm-hmm. thing. It starts in the spirit. Mm-hmm. But what I want to say, is when, you know, and I'm coming up against a lot of prayer and meditation, which is awesome. But what I want to suggest is, where are you seeking the divine guidance? You know, I believe mm. the prayer and meditation can be maintenance spirit. Right. Where, are right. You, where, where are you saying, you know, what's the virtue I need to practice today to make myself mm. better? What's the person, place, or thing I need to release so that I could step into my better today? Uh-huh. Right. You know, think right. So, so on a daily basis, what are you doing? What's the behavior? Not the concept. I want to be more fearless. That's the concept. What's the behavior that demonstrates your fearlessness? I'm going to call the person that I've got a beef with and say, listen, you know, I miss you. And I know that, you know, our friendship is off and I don't know where it's going to go. I just need to say that I miss you. That's a fearless mm. gesture between sisters, right? So yes. That, that's the biggest thing is to follow your spirit and to know that your spirit's never going to mislead you. Follow it in a guidance, a divine guidance way. And then I feel like the discipline that's necessary, the consistency that's necessary with this amazing clean food that builds clean, fat-free muscle and a clean mental space and an energetic, joy-filled spirit, that is how you stay disciplined and consistent. It's from rooting that spirit first. Mm, I love that. I love that. Well, Mm -hmm. I want you to stay right there. I want to ask all of our panelists to come back in because we have opened up some amazing bouquets tonight. And I really just, I want to toss flowers out to the audience by way of tips. I am ready to talk about it. Um, You know, I've heard a lot about within. And and so I want to open up the subject of self-care. And I want to know what it means to each of you, you know, both as an inner and an outer principle. And because this is really important. We are learning self-care. Many of us as fully grown women, we are just learning self-care. We've been so used to giving and giving and even giving out of our lack. And as I said on air this morning, you know, we're writing more yeses in terms of checks or more yes checks than we can yeah. cash. Right. You know, so we're overdrawn. Okay. So, so I want to I want to know what self care means to each of you because we want to toss some flowers out tonight and help somebody. I, I'm gonna jump in real quick because you, uh, you, everybody was teasing me in the beginning because I literally just landed back in LA from Cabo San Lucas. Oh. And I, before that, I was in St. Thomas. Okay. Not 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 just because of vacation, because LA and the COVID cases and the um the disrespect and the um. And the the lack of um, mask wearing and and following protocol for the county mm-hmm. scared me health wise. Yeah. And so I said, you know what, my self care is to make sure that. And I heard FA say this that my sleep is solid. Um, I heard Serena say my nutrition is solid. That my um, my self love is so- is solid. So in order for all those things to be lined, I had to leave LA, and I knew that I didn't necessarily mm-hmm. pick where I was going, but I started doing the research. What are the airplanes like? I started saying, you know, how many people are traveling? How many cases in St. Thomas? I did my research. All of that is self-love and self-care. Knowing yourself well, going where you feel safe, hanging Mm. out where you feel safe, surrounding yourself with a safety net is where to me it starts. The fact that I found it in Cabo was nice. (laughs) (laughs) I'll say. I, I was after my safety net. Mm. 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 I like that. I'll tell you what what I do. I have what I call my Mm. 1.5. There there are two great commands in the Bible. One is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. The other one is to love your neighbor as yourself. And see, my thing is they miss the 1.5. For me to love my neighbor as myself first, I got to love me. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so you know, for the last year or so, I have been focusing on my 1.5 so mm. that I can love somebody else. Mm. But if I don't start first with me, if I'm not taking care of me, if I'm not nurturing me, if I'm not nurturing not just 
my body, but my mind and my spirit and my soul, if I'm not doing the reading, if I'm not learning, if I'm not growing, if I'm not uh, developing myself as I go, then I don't have anything to give anybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right. I'm working on the 1.5. And <laughs> you can do that whether or not you get to go to Kabul or not. <laughs> but next time, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like 1.5. I, I, first of all, can I just talk about how beautiful everybody's skin is on this oh screen? <laughs> everybody's so gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I, for me, um, as a mom, like I have uh, having, I have a 13-year-old and I have a nine-year-old. And so, and then I'm married. And so then you become consumed with their stuff, their life. You know, the whole, you all know the routine. You, you you start to become consumed with everybody else's stuff. And then you you start to feel not okay in here and here, all of that. And so for me, I had to, again, and this goes back to Mickey, what I was talking about earlier, I have to forgive myself mm -hmm. or allow myself to not be engaged and engulfed in others. Because it was like guilt. I was suffering mm -hmm. from mommy guilt, you know, a lot. Like if I leave the house and I go out of town, oh, they're not with me. And, you know, so I was, I was beating myself up so much for not doing things for others that I was depleting myself completely. And so I had to be okay with not, you know, losing my entire self in others. And that was a, that is a, that is a, that is, a, that is still an ongoing process for me. Like every day mm -hmm. I have to remember to pick me first. I have to remember to choose me first and not feel guilty. So for me, it's about dealing with that guilt and understanding that is, that's not the truth. You know, mm -hmm. um, me going me taking care of me first, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, um, everything is not, um, it's not a crime. <laughs> I'm not doing right. something bad, you know? And I think, especially just talking to my girlfriends, we're all the same story. Well, you know, girl, guess what I did? And it's like something small. And then be like, oh, I went walking by myself. And then we act like this was such a big task or this big, this big thing <laughs> that we should be excited about when right. we should be doing this all the time. But I think that I, I really beat, beat myself up a lot. I used to beat myself up a lot about picking myself first. So I work mm -hmm. on the guilt of not doing that. Yeah, the, there's that peace of mind permission slip. I love that. The peace of yeah. mind permission, permission slip. slip. Yes, that's it. Yes, because I want my better too. I'm still yeah. trying. To, <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to rock my better too, child. I want. I yeah. Want <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a closet confidential conversation because I, 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 yes, I'm asking myself some of those questions. You better believe it. <laughs> Ernestine? All right. At age 84, mm. I just say thank you, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to live to be 84 years of age. Mm. And I want all of you to know that I have been married for 64 years. And my oh. husband has just died in September. And I knew what I had to do to keep myself together. I always knew that when things bothered me, I would have to get out and run. And I get up every morning. I'm up at 3.30 every morning and I go out and run. I have a young lady that I run with and I call her my daughter because she's so sweet. And we run the hills and stay out there for three hours. Mm, wow. That helps my mental state because I don't want to suffer with anxiety or anything like that. And then what else helps me? I love helping other people. And when I help others, that keeps me in a very, very good mood. Mm -hmm. God has blessed me. I'm so thankful to be sitting here and seeing all of you beautiful ladies. And that at the age that I am, 
that you would even want me to participate in something like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) You are, please, you, your life is demonstrating what what self-care means and what it means to live a lifestyle of well-being. And, and I love, you know, one of my favorite sayings is that, um, you know, know your value. Self-perception colors everything. And Mm. for each of you, it really is how you see yourself. And you're not waiting for someone else to hold up the mirror and say, you deserve this. You all held up the mirror and you all know. So if, 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 as we move towards the end, and I knew that time was going to be an enemy for us. um, (laughs) If you could sum up in one word, the most compelling thing that you could tell someone that would help them know that they need to honor this commitment to their well-being, to self-care, what would it be for each of you? The first thing I would tell everyone, remember that age is nothing but a number Mm -hmm. and that you can get fit. And you know one thing, I have to say this one thing real quick. When I end my classes, I always use a quote by Audrey Hepburn. For beautiful eyes, always look for the good in others. Mm. For beautiful lips, only speak words of kindness. For poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never, ever alone. Mm. 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 That's beautiful. Word. Beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. There, there's two wow. quick things for me, I would say one, try not to look for company in living your vision. Mm. Um, because mm. sometimes as women, you know, I, I tell my girlfriends, you know, when we're, when we're out and say, you want to go to the bathroom? I, I don't I don't need you to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say number one, you know, stop looking for company and, and permission to live your vision. Mm. Um, it's your life, your vision, step forward in it. And very quickly, I think the other thing is everything that you, that you that people are watching in us, you know, we we are all I said this earlier, I don't know if everybody heard me. The joy that we're living with, the joy that we're working with is so beautiful. Um, as Mickey, you said, we've all taken the step to live our dreams and to live our passions. For the women watching, I just wanna say that whatever you're, whatever you're looking at, whatever you are inspired by, whatever you're motivated by, what you want is on the other side of achieving it. So you're the physical manifestation of strong spirit, strong discipline, strong consistency, and self love. Uh, wow. My God. This, wow. I, I tell you, this is such, this is good for me. I'm doing so many good words. <laughs> this is so, so good. My God. Uh, I'm, man, it is a blessing to be a part of this panel. Um, as I'm sitting here thinking, I, I, I tried Mickey with one word. So I'm going to go try, I'm going to try with one word. Uh, <laughs> I would say, um, at the root of everything that I do in my career and life and everything, it starts with belief. You have mm. to believe. If you don't believe, you're done. You're, you're a goner, you're finished. And you have to believe past what others think, what your environment is, what it looks like. You have mm. to have faith. Work, faith is dead without works and vice versa. Yes. You can't yes. work without faith. You can't get to the work without it. So for me, it is to just believe that you can do absolutely anything that you put your mind to. Awesome. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Wow. Wow. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. It has been powerful. I mean, I this could really be the slumber party, the continuing the night conversation. <laughs> for our well-being because we have so much that lies within our power and we just really need to be toured on the journey. And that's what you all do in your day to day. Uh, In closing, I wanna say to all of us who are watching tonight that 
this season in our lives, no matter what age you are, is pregnant with the opportunity to thrive. And Amen. it lies with each of us to really seize it. The beauty is that each of us get to define that based on the choices that work for us. And I love how ladies, how you all said that, ask yourself the question, you know, choose your words. Is it determination? Certainly it's commitment. What does your better look like? And so it, we, each of us has to do the work. Certainly my personal mantra for life is if the best is possible, then good is not enough. And Ooh. that's how I came of age. And, and, and so being your most empowered self really calls for you to give it your best. And, and the secret, and it's really not that secret. The real key to that lies in nurturing what you want to grow and starving what you know you need to check. Ooh. And anytime it gets a little fuzzy for Miss Mickey, that's what I do. <laughs> I, you know, I say, you can't have it both ways. You can't bake those chocolate cakes and then eat them all day long and yum yum and then wonder why, you know, uh, the, the pants are a little tight and the things don't look good side right. front ways and when you turn around. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a choice. It really, it really is a choice. And what I know is that some changes have to be made and we each have to do that for ourselves. Again, the ease lies in recognizing that we don't have to know it all. And certainly thankful to the Black Women's Health Imperative and women such as yourself, the answers are there. We don't have to figure it out for ourselves. And I'm glad about that because Lord knows I've tried enough things on my own that didn't work. That's just a testimony. You know, they say no test, no testimony. Well, I've been mm -hmm. tested. So I found that to be true. <laughs> More uh, test. <laughs> okay, 100%. But in closing, I will say to all of us, don't put a period where you should put an exclamation mark on mm. your life, shift your priorities, set your boundaries. You know, we say yes too much. Be engaged in self-care and take stock of what's really important so you can own the queen that lies in you. Mm. This is our time and we just ought to show up ready. So thank Man. you panel for joining us for such thank a you. time as this. Thank you to the Black Women's Health Imperative. Thank you, Bumble and AARP. Good night, ladies, and all the Good best. Night. Bye, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye.